can you get Ukraine aid passed separate from this? No, no. The, the, the focus is we hear from so many people is why would we deal with other people's national security and ignore American national security? Welcome back to America Decides. That was Oklahoma Republican Senator James Lankford standing firm on the GOP position that funding for Israel and Ukraine needs to be tied to border policy changes. Ukrainian President Zelensky will try to put his thumb on the scale tomorrow when he meets with congressional leaders in Washington. Joel Payne and Maura Gillespie join us now. Joel is a CBS News political contributor, Democratic strategist, and chief communications officer for Move On. While Maura previously served as an advisor to Speaker John Boehner and Congressman Adam Kinzinger. She is now the founder of Blue Stack Strategies. Welcome to you both. So let's start out with Ukraine and border security. Maura, Republicans are saying these two have to be tied together. It's very difficult to get a sense of how close negotiators are at this point because they don't want to tell us mm -hmm. where they stand right now on things like asylum, humanitarian parole. What we do know is that Congress has an abysmal track record when it comes to negotiating border security or immigration deals and then getting it passed. And part of that reason is they don't want to tell the constituents at home what they're thinking, what they're planning, because immigration border security has long been a wedge issue for both sides of the aisle. Right. So it's, again, in thinking about polls and how they're, you know, relaying themselves to voters, they don't want to share that yet. And I think that for us, as, as, you know, we're sitting here wondering how they're going to flesh this out, it doesn't seem like it's possible. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, you know, they're not really looking at the full picture when it comes to our foreign policy and how we need to support our allies because of the impacts it does have on us here at home and our safety and security. The, the correlation is very much there, but unfortunately for the Republican Party, it's just not really making that connection, which, again, is a very big uh, step back from where I joined as a Republican. We were always the foreign policy pro our allies, and so now it's, it's interesting, that the change of tone, for sure. Jill, it's always darkest before the dawn. They could come out and magically have a deal sometime this week. Uh, but how far do you think Democrats are really willing to go when it comes to border policy when a path to citizenship is not part of this deal, uh, legalization for the Dreamers, also not part of this deal? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I think because the president has actually come out and been very bullish and said, I want to do something on the border, that kind of tells you, I think, what Democrats are willing to do is, which is they're willing to go further maybe than they typically would in terms of border security. Also, look, um, I'm a Senate kid. You're, you're, awesome. you're, you're a House person. Th these folks need deadlines, and I think we're yeah. running up across some deadlines right now. I think they'll get something done. One, because you've heard Democrats say they're willing to do something on the border. And I do think that most Republicans mm. probably still want to do something on Israel for sure. And I think there's probably a quiet majority that want to do something on Ukraine as well, even if the politics don't allow for it right now. Politically, the president needs to do something yeah. when it comes to border security, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think particularly in this election season, but, you know, honestly, the president, even he's facing some pressure within his party. You've heard Democrats like John Fetterman talk about the changing politics on immigration. I think it is incumbent upon Democrats to find a way to be both thoughtful on immigration, but also be impactful, to, to not put out something on immigration that's going to go against their, um, their values, um, that's going to go against what people think of as some of the moral concerns related to, to migration, but also that kind of, you know, meets the moment right now. Maura, the president has already cut one deal with Republicans and got burned. It was on the debt. Uh, he, he cut this very high-profile deal, deal with the House Speaker, who is no longer the House Speaker. Correct, yeah. He got ejected because uh, his right flank thought that it didn't go far enough, and they basically abandoned that deal. Uh, if the president now steps forward and cuts a deal with Senate Republicans on border security, what guarantees does he have that House Republicans aren't going to reject it again because they, again, don't feel like it goes far enough. And, that, you know, we've seen that before. I, when I work for John Boehner, people of the party constantly move the goalpost on us, uh, despite doing all we could to get an agreement that was viable. Uh, on this issue in on particular. This issue. So <laughs> I understand those, those concerns and those frustrations. But when you look at the economy as number one issue, that's on people's minds. Number two is security and safety. So it has to but the Republicans will be able to push the president to get more of what they want in this scenario. Mm -hmm. And and they're going to have to just get on board with it, truthfully, because the American people are genuinely deeply concerned about safety and security. It's 
across the country as an issue. And you hear even the most conservative Republicans saying on the House floor, we haven't gotten anything done. We don't have anything to show for our control of the House. So they're looking for something that they can take back to their voters in 2024 as well, which symbolizes the fact that there is this potentially um, important moment where both sides have a lot to gain from compromising on this intractable issue. Nancy, I think Republicans feel like they've gotten rolled on a couple of deals here recently, and I think there's pressure on Mike Johnson. I think there's pressure on Mitch McConnell to demonstrate to their base, not just their base outside of D.C., but their base inside of D.C., that they'll fight for the stuff that Republicans purport to care about. So I think that's why they are putting up a fight or at least getting caught trying to put up a fight. I want to play a little bit of sound for you, uh, because in, in Bob Costa's interview with the former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, he gave a little bit of advice to the new Speaker, Mike Johnson. Let's take a listen. The best advice I could give to him you're the Speaker of the House. Do not, do not govern in the idea that you're afraid somebody's going to make a motion to vacate. When I made the decision to pay our troops and not shut down, I knew they were going to make a motion to vacate on me. Samora, so he's saying, you just got to do what's right, no matter what the consequences are. Well, it's nice to hear that now, but where was that, you know, time and time again when Kevin McCarthy failed to do so for what was right and and necessary to protect our democracy. Uh, So I don't quite really have a lot of sympathy there for that. And again, it's fun to take the moral high ground when you're standing back and you're no longer part of the the actual consequences of your actions. Uh, But Mike Johnson's going to be in the same position, but also Kevin McCarthy put him in this position by not changing the threshold for ousting the Speaker of the House. Very well, so. Don't make a deal to do motion to vacate with one vote. Uh, that is a, that's a good advice. <laughs> that advice. Probably <laughs> McCarthy himself, which is that he had taken months ago. Mm-hmm. Joel Payne, Mara Gillespie, thank you both thank so you. much. Appreciate it.